Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Christine and this is Christine Says A Lot. Today is my day on the sewing vlogging tour for the hashtag SewUpCycle22 being run by Karen from So Little Time and Becky from the Notes of the Sewing Room. Now, there have been a dozen vloggers who have already posted vlogs on this challenge. So I'm going to be brief and talking about the challenge rules and I'll leave information down below. I'm also going to insert an infographic with the basic rules. In a nutshell, the challenge is to upcycle a garment or something that you already own without using new fabric. So you can remake a me made, ready to make wear, or it could be a tablecloth, curtains, something along those lines. Just don't use fabric that has not already been something else. So no pet clothes or accessories. Now what I'm wearing today would be a great pattern to use for the challenge. This is the cuff top by the assembly line. This is a rather busy print so you can't see that there's a seam that goes down the center of the front and of the back. So it's a very simple construction. Two pieces, so you have a front, you have a back piece. You could use either facing or do like I did and just do bias binding for the neck band and some chunky elastic. It'd be great for color blocking. You could even use four different coordinating fabrics to create this top. So it'd be a great one for an upcycling. Now I'm going to show you my first upcycle project that was a big success. I took what could arguably be described as the ugliest nightgown known to man, even maybe a little bit skanky looking, that I found on the clearance rack. I'm going to insert a photo here. When I saw this on clearance, it was only about $2. And you might be thinking you spent $2 too much for it, but I saw this not as a nightgown, but as fabric for a potential garment. And this sparked the obsession of the Hudson pants in my house. I transformed this ugly, trashy looking nightgown into a pair of Hudson pants for my grandson. I did need to add some fabric to get the waistband and I produced a pair of pants that became my grandson's favorite pair of pants. So what started as an upcycle project turned into an obsession to where I have made 10 pairs of Hudson pants with increasing demand for more. So I want to show you what my plans are or potential projects because I think I have more ideas and more remakes than what I actually have time for in this month. The first one I'm going to show you is one that if you've been following my challenge will not surprise you. And that is the Sophia Dungarees by Tilly and the Buttons. This is a pattern that I've talked about a few times on my channel. I made these and they just didn't work for me. The straps were in the wrong place. I spent a lot of time pinning and moving and tacking down and trying different things. I unpicked this many times and it just didn't work. So what I did was a bit of a refashion. I extended the straps and made loops in the back to have it cross tie in the back. And it still did not work. This is really a big oversized dungaree. As I hold it up, it looks like a very big sack of potatoes. So probably some of the initial problems was sewing it in a size that was too big. And I did go by my body measurements, but I think with the oversized, it just wasn't working. When I crossed the straps in the back and tied it off, it caused the size to just kind of poke out and kind of gathered. It just wasn't working. And I was tired of trying to make this pattern work. 
This is very nice linen fabric, so I wanted to make sure that I got some good use out of this fabric. This is a very wide leg trouser, super wide. So what I did was I measured the leg of the trouser to see from side seam to side seam how wide it was and how long the inseam was to know how much fabric do I have to work with. The legs are about 14 and a half inches wide and 24 inches long. So that's a lot of fabric to work with. I also have the bib portion that is super wide, part of the problem with it. And I have all of the waist tie and very long shoulder ties to work with. So I have several options for using this linen in a way that will make this beautiful fabric turn into a garment that will get a lot of wear. So one of the things I've mentioned on my channel before was to sew my husband Charlie a pair of the Wardrobe By Me summer shorts. I think this would look really nice on Charlie. Very cute, he's so handsome. But the thing is, I didn't make these for the He Made June 22 because Charlie does not need another pair of shorts. And I want to be mindful, especially with this challenge, I'm trying to take this linen that is beautiful and turn it into something that would be worn often. So I went looking through my pattern stash and was thinking about what would fit with this fabric. And I came up with a few ideas. I could make for the grandsons matching shorts I have two patterns that I think would work well. There's the Robert pattern by Children's Corner, and I was thinking the shorts as opposed to the pants. I have enough fabric for either of those, but if I wanna use up all of this fabric, it would be really fun to make matching shorts for my grandsons. This pattern goes from six months to size six, now my oldest grandson is seven and he's very tall for his age, but I think the size six with added length would be a good fit for him for this spring and the summer. For the younger boys, the Cameron's pull on shorts. This is a really cute pattern by Ginger Snap Designs. As you can see, I have already used this. I made this one Easter and it's a fuller short, very old fashioned looking, very sweet. And I think it would look great with the top. I do have some really nice white lawn, cotton lawn that um, would go well with that for the baby. I wouldn't do the top in shorts for the older boys, but for the two and a half year old, I think that would be really sweet. So I could make them all three matching shorts, that's a possibility. The other possibility would be to make a couple pairs of the Parker's pants. This goes from size one to four. So maybe for my granddaughter and the youngest grandson, I could make them pants. I also have another option that would help me use up all of this yardage of the straps and the waist ties. So two options are both Violet Field Threads patterns. If you've been following me, you'll know how much I love the aesthetic of Violet Field Threads patterns. Their look is modern vintage, and I think it's really sweet. So the two patterns that I have picked out as possibilities are the Lottie Pinafore. This would require seams on the skirt. I think with the gathered skirt that the seam would not be that noticeable. And I think it would fit in with the pinafore look and be really cute for my granddaughter. So that's one option. The other option is the Bailey overalls. I think this would be super cute. My granddaughter is one and this is a medium weight linen. So I don't think it would be as good of a choice for the 
uh, winter. You can see as I hold it up to the light that it wouldn't keep her too cozy and warm in the winter, but I think it would be great for fall and spring. She's one, I think a size two would be perfect for her in the Bailey overalls. So that's a lot of ideas for using up this linen fabric that has been hanging in my closet, just mocking me for years now. If you have any other ideas of how I can use that linen, I would love it if you would let me know in the comment section below. So the next garment that I wanna do a total remake upcycle on is my laundry day tee dress that I sewed in this Robert Kaufman knit fabric. I sewed this for Frugal Frocks a couple years ago, and the color is not a good color for me. It's a good quality jersey. I wanna get some better use out of it. You can see I was not happy enough to even hem the sleeves. I just serged them, and the same for the bottom of the dress. So I was thinking I could turn this into something for my granddaughter. It's a blush pink background with hot pink tiger. I was thinking I could make her pajamas, I could make her a t-shirt and leggings. And what I'm really leaning towards is the Harem Romper by Brindle & Twigs. And I'll insert a stock photo here. I think it would be really cute and it should get a lot of wear out of it. I've purchased the pattern. I'm waiting on the PDF delivery and I think it's gonna be cute. If you're enjoying this video, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a like and hit subscribe. I'd love to have you join us as a regular. So I have another muslin or toile that I would like to refashion into something for me. This was the fringe dress and I went by my measurements and I found that I needed to size down and perhaps do a full bust adjustment on this dress. I love the fabric. I would like to repurpose this fabric and make something for myself out of it. And I have a couple ideas of what I might do. There's a lot of fabric here, as you can see that I can cut and turn it into something else. I don't think I could get a dress out of this just based on the neckline and where the seams are, but I definitely think I could get a top. So a couple ideas that I have would be to sew the hyssop blouse by Deer and Doe Patterns. I'll insert a photo. I made two of them this summer, really enjoyed them got a lot of wear out of them. It does not take a lot of fabric and it's a great option for upcycling. I could also make an Ogden cami out of this. Let me know what would you make out of this. I did think that I could make a skirt without too much effort out of this, but I'm really thinking top, something to wear close to my face because I do love this color and I've got loads of fabric. So my final garment that I would like to make more wearable is one that I love so many things about it, and that is the Evelyn Skirt by Chalk and Notch Patterns. I sewed this this summer. I really love the fabric. It works really well with this design. It has a little bit of structure, but not so much that it's bulky in the waistband. It's so easy to wear. The thing that holds me back from wearing this more often is this very high slit. Now I wanted to make this straight out of the packet according to the directions the first time I made it. This is not an expensive fabric, but I really like it. This is $6 a yard. I bought it at Amy Fabrics in Pensacola, and I want to make this more wearable because I love it and it's something that I could see myself wearing just about every day. It's a high-waisted skirt so you can imagine how high this slit comes. So I had to think about how I would adjust this slit 
in order to make it more wearable. I first went looking through some table runners and some antique dresser covers, that kind of thing, to see if I could find some interesting crochet or edging or lace finishing that would look great that I could just sew into the slit. But everything I had, I either liked it so much I didn't want to take it apart, or it was very much off-white because it was vintage and I didn't think it would look good and intentional as a insert into the slit. So I had a couple ideas. One of them is in the wash. I will hopefully remember to insert a photo. I found this blouse at the thrift store and it has flounces on the sleeves and I thought that would be really cute to sew the two flounces together, so to stack them, and then sew them to the slit facing here behind the skirt and then have that be a feature. It's the same shade of cobalt blue as in this um, micro gingham and I thought that would be really cute. Then today I had a sudden inspiration that wouldn't it be cool to have a piece of fabric underneath the slit, you know, smooth, so nothing flouncy, and to have some embroidery detail running down the length and have it look very intentional. And I knew that I had this toile or muslin of the blouse by the Avid Seamstress, and this was just sitting in my sewing work in progress basket because I thought I really like this color for me and this would be a great thing to maybe reuse the fabric of. So I thought, wouldn't it's very wrinkled. It's been crumpled up in the whip basket. But I was thinking if I were to machine embroider some flowers or something in a line down the fabric, and then sew that to the facing behind the slit so that you see peeking out some dark cobalt blue and the interesting embroidery design and have it look very intentional on the slit facing. So that's my goal is to not have it look like I am making this project work. I want it to look really nice. So those are my two ideas. I think I'm going to go ahead and pick out a machine embroidery design, do up the embroidery, and I can pin it to the facing and look and see how it looks. And then maybe move on to trying the flounce if I don't think I like that look. If you have another idea of how I can rescue this skirt, in a way that looks very intentional and purposeful. I'd love to have your idea, because even if it's not something that I can do within the month of October, or maybe if it doesn't fit the rules because I go out and purchase something for um, inserting into this slit or amending this slit, this is something that I really, really do love. And I want this to be something that I get a lot of wear out of. I do have more of this fabric. So if you've got some ideas, even if it doesn't comply with the challenges, I want to get more use out of the skirt. There's so many great ideas out there. If you want to see other vloggers on the tour, you can search the hashtag SewUpcycle22. Yesterday, we heard from Karen from So Little Time and Crystal from my social thread. Tomorrow, we're going to hear from Helen from Stitch, Rip, Repeat and Kathy from my sewing practice. I would love it if you would join us in the conversation below. If you have some suggestions for me, I'd love to hear it. And if you would like some ideas, I would love to give you some ideas on how you can participate in this challenge 
and upcycle something into a garment you will love. I'm going to be posting videos and showing progress of my makes during this month, so I hope you come back and join me. Until next time, I hope you have a joyful week and that you find the good in all things, especially sewing. Bye!